Good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Great right to see a great oh. crowd here. I believe that everyone is muted, but if you can mute yourselves until you need to uh, we'll be speaking, I'd appreciate it to uh, avoid any background uh, noises. So um, for those who don't know me, I'm Richard Karsten, the president of Malloy. And I had Brother Leo as a guidance counselor in the late 1970s when a slice of pizza at Alba's was 75 cents. <laughs> so uh, thank you to the Morris family, to over four decades of Stanners who are joining us today. We have a great turnout. Uh, we're very excited to get together. Uh, thank, thank you all for joining us and thank you for your care and stewardship of Malloy. Now the SMILE program and Brother Leo are really iconic uh, brothers and people who truly shaped who we are as individuals and as a school. And even though he's no longer with us, Brother Leo's impact lives on and his presence is felt every day. I see it every day at Malloy and it's a wonderful thing. Uh, and it's, it comes through people like Brother James Norton, Chris Doherty, Brother Dan, and many of our teachers and faculty like Eric Stoltz. Uh, Brother Leo's presence was so big and so booming that even if we take a fraction of the gifts that he gave us, his energy, enthusiasm, and his big heart is broadcast through thousands of students who encountered his strength and vitality. In the halls of uh, Malloy, you know, we kind of hear the echoes of his voice booming every day. And uh, we really miss him, but uh, there's such great strength in the ability to get us all together as a group uh, to remember Brother Leo and his importance to our lives and the way he filled our lives with uh, some amazing vigor and amazing uh, spirit. We take that with us every day uh, for years and years to come. So once again, thank you for joining us today. And uh, thank you for your interest and your support of the Maris Brothers mission at Malloy. So now I'd like to turn it over to Craig Katinas, who's gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna do today and uh, maybe give some more specific special thanks. All right, thank you, Richard. And thank you everybody for participating. As you saw in the chat room, we're still gonna be letting people throughout uh, the event. It's amazing. We have over 120 people that registered for this event. Um, so thank you for all that have taken time out today to be a part of this. Um, I also wish to thank Brother Dan O'Reardon, Brother James Norton, Monsignor Duran, Ted McGinnis, Chris Doherty, Nancy Cantalino, Joe Somo, Ashley Callagy, Ryan Harrington, and all whom helped put together this dynamic event. We'd be remiss without thanking the family that gave us, Leo, the Morris family. So thank you to the Morris family that's joining us on the call today. And really it's a delight to see also some Hall of Famers like Peter Vesey uh, on the call today. Peter, thank you so much for making time. I know you have an extremely busy schedule and honestly all the standards who are on the call today. So as uh, President Karsten intimated because the number of guests and the multimedia presentations, um, we ask you to please stay muted until there are appropriate times to unmute such as a response to a prayer. Um, we would like to minimize any distractions or ambient noises for all. Uh, the format today will begin with Monsignor Duran leading us in prayer, which then followed by Brother Dan leading us in a reflection where music and a PowerPoint presentation will occur. Then we'll hear from Brother James Norton, who shared the early beginnings of SMILE and how Leo and others built the foundations of what it is today. We will then have a special video from Chris Doherty sharing some of the beloved spots at Malloy. Then we're going to have uh, a little blast from the past, little breakout groups for all of you to interact and share some experiences and reflections. We have group leaders in those groups. Um, the rooms will be led by Brother Dan, Brother James, Chris, Ted, Ashley, and Ryan. And then we'll finish together as a group and toast Leo and of course pizza. So without the, uh, further ado, Monsignor, if you can lead us in prayer. Indeed, it is my pleasure to do so. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, your church dedicates this month of November a special time to recall and remember the souls of our beloved deceased family members 
and above all our friends. We, as Marists, and the Malloy family have been greatly blessed to have been impacted by the lives of some very, very special men and women who followed your call to be of greater service to so many during their lives here upon earth. Today, we remember Brother Leo Richard Teddy. He died 25 years ago and was a saint of many to many generations of Stanner students. He founded the SMILE as well as the peer group program and his legacy and his impact continue in our lives to this day. We also remember some of the other giants and SMILE founders who likewise have returned to their heavenly home. We lovingly and prayerfully remember Brother Regis, Ron Marcelin, Dr. Bob Englert, Mary Michaels, Mary Hart, and above all, Pat Murphy. Heavenly Father, we pray that our smile founder may now rest with you and with Mary, your beloved mother, and enjoy their just rewards and your heavenly banquet. We pray that they might continue to watch over us as well as the entire Malloy community. We entrust to you the many generations of young people who have benefited and continued to be enriched by the SMILE and peer group programs at Archbishop Malloy. We also pray that you may help our scientists quickly find a vaccine to end this terrible pandemic that has devastated our world and tragically killed so many, including Brother Bob Andrews and Mr. Mike Harrison of the Malloy community. We offer all of these prayers to you, our Father, Jesus, our brother, and Mary, our good mother. Saint Marcelin Champagne, pray for us. Mary, our good mother, pray for us. And let us always remember to pray for each other. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Danny O'Rid will take over, I think, now. Danny, are you lost? <laughs> uh, Joe Somo is going to start a slideshow uh, as well as a song in a few moments. And I just ask you to listen to the words of this song as we look back and uh, so lovingly remember those that have touched their lives and gone before us.
great to be in this virtual cave with you all today as we uh, so lovingly remember those that have come before us. Uh, but the important part, I think, today is remembering that they gave us a legacy uh, to carry on in our own lives and how we live it. And it continues today at Malloy, uh, it continues elsewhere uh, in public schools, even thanks to Ray Stefan. It continues in all of our lives uh, in how we continue to live their legacy um, in just the way we continue to be the people that they helped us become. Uh, so it's great to share these few moments today with you all in this virtual cave. God bless all standers. Thank you, Brother Dan. Um, I'm not sure if Brother James, are you back in your office or are you in the cave? I'm in the cave. Excellent. I'll go back to my office later. Okay. The, the, the court is yours. All right, I've been asked to give um, a little history, what I remember, the SMILE program. Some of you have other memories of this and because some of you were here before I was. Uh, I'll tell you, this is what I tell the kids when I start every peer group. I give them a little history. I want them to know that this isn't just something you're doing here. This is something you are part of that goes back to the mid 60s. A wonderful thing you're joining today. And I usually help hold up this picture, which you saw before. And I say, you see this guy here? <laughs> this is brother Leah Richard Morris. I first met him when I was a kid at Malloy. I was a freshman at Malloy. I was at a sodality meeting after school. One of the seniors was speaking to us and the door flies open and in comes this guy in a cassock and he says something to the senior. I don't even know what he said. It was so fast. Those of you who know Leo know how fast he spoke. Comes in, says something, the door shuts. And I remember turning to the kid next to me and I said, who was that? <laughs> I, was, I was like amazed. The next time I see him, I'm up in a sopus. I'm a novice studying to be a brother. And he shows up and I'm like, what is he doing here? That, that, he's, we have school, Malloy's got school. What is he doing up here? There you go. Better? Okay. Um, it turns out he was up there to rest. Now what Leo was doing was not just, at that time he was teaching five classes. I think he had history. I know he had history classes. He had, may have had religion. Then after school, he was a track coach doing field events, which took him to about four, 4.30. Then kids would meet up with him either in a classroom or in an office he eventually had and he would be talking with these kids. I'm not exaggerating. Sometimes till 10, 11 o'clock at night. He was getting tired out. People were asking him to speak in parishes. Some of you may know this. You're aware of this. Maybe you got him to do this. He would be seeing not only Malloy kids. They would be bringing in their friends and saying, you got to meet this brother Leo. So he would come in. Then these kids would talk to their girlfriends. Their girlfriends were coming into school after hours. He would be sitting with them. Then he's invited to parishes. He was getting crazy. Of course, Leo was running around like a maniac the way he was all the time. Um, the doctor said, you need complete rest. You have mononucleosis. Now it was up in the sopus that he got this idea, I'm going to, I know what I'm going to do, I can't keep doing this myself. I'm going to get older kids who have been through issues with me. They've started to work on these things. I'm going to get them to help other kids. This is the legacy he left. Likes on likes. So that's how this started. It started after school as a very informal thing. I think we gave it the name Smile 
the kids came up with this name and the inaccurate, you know, we're going to call it Smile, in the 80s. Then I tell them in 1971, the religion department, Brother Leo, the entire new counseling department got together and said, every student who goes through this building should have an opportunity to be in a group with all the students and a counselor and have the opportunity to talk about their lives. This started in 1971. I tell him, Governor Cuomo, whether you like him or not, he had peer group here. Kenny Anderson, Kenny Smith, so many other people. I said half the faculty had peer group in this building. And now you're joining this legacy and I want you to be part of it, get involved in it, have a wonderful time in peer group. So that's that's the way, that's the kind of introduction introduction I give every time peer group starts and the other counselors do the same thing. So his legacy is going on. I gotta tell you a little anecdote. This morning I'm talking to my sister. She's 10 years younger than I am. And I tell him, we're gonna have this virtual thing to honor brother Leo Richard. She goes on for 10 minutes. <laughs> talking about Leo. She met him when she was in high school. She, she met him when she had a job in Manhattan. We went in there to eat in this restaurant. She went on for 10 minutes about the legacy of this man. She said that he, give, <laughs> he gave his whole life to kids. That's all he wanted to do. He was focused on these kids all the time. He didn't care about protocol, Maris Brothers, rules in school. <laughs> He was amazing. And that's what he did. This is my sister telling me this. I didn't even know that she's talking for about 10 minutes. I'm not kidding. So that's my little introduction. That's how we introduce our new kids to this wonderful, wonderful man and to this wonderful experience. Thank you. Brother James, thank you so much. Uh, it was just so beautiful. I, if, you know, I, I feel like if we were all together, we'd be giving a standing uh, round of applause for that. Um, so thank you so much for sharing that experience. Um, I'm gonna transition over to you, Chris, and then we'll share a little uh, trip down memory lane through video. Thank you so much, Craig. And boy, very, uh, very emotional around noon on the East Coast here with uh, Brother James's anecdotes and the history and Brother Dan, that amazing, photo montage. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are feeling some really beautiful emotions right now. And um, Joe Somo and I uh, did a video last week. And ironically, I went, I wore a hoodie that day. And I thought it was kind of funny because it's, you know, it's not the most, it's not the most professional attire. But it was cold and I'm bald and I put the hood on a lot. So, <laughs> um, but it dawned on me that, you know, Brother Leo used to always have this little zip up. Anyone who remembers Leo or seen photos, he had this, he had this little like uh, Adidas baby blue. Suit. Yeah, like a warm up suit with navy blue stripes down the side. He always wore navy blue pants and these red, uh, these red shoes. I think they were from Dexter. As a, as a college kid, I started wearing them. All these different things that come to mind. But anyway, the video we're about to show you is if, if, if we had been able to gather in May as we thought here, um, a lot of you would have roamed the building, checking out rooms that you used to go to for peer group, for smile, for comfort, for big brother, all the different groups we had over the years with Brother Leo and all the founders. Um, so this is a, this is a short video, um, that, uh, Joe Somo and I put together, uh, Friday. And I think for some of you, you'll get to see Malloy actually in action because it was a school day. So you will see, you know, masks and other things happening, but. We were very happy to do this and do a little tour. So I'll turn it over to uh, Joe and Nancy to cue that up. So how did this all come about, this special celebration that we're so happy all of you are here with us today for? So he's gonna kill me, but Brother Dan O'Reardon, two years ago, right here, we were chatting in the hallway and he looked up and he said, two years from now, it's gonna be Brother Leo's 20th anniversary and we're gonna celebrate his life, pizza, he even said, pizza on me, and we'll have a, we'll, we'll tell some stories, and we'll say a little prayer, and we're just going to reminisce about Brother Leo, 
Smile Peer Group and all the amazing programs that still are here today. L legend and legacy. So a huge thank you to Brother Dan for that. And also Father Ed Durand for coming today and doing our wonderful prayer service. And one of the founding fathers that Brother Leo put together, his, his coalition of the willing, if you, if you will, along with Sheila Murphy and Doc Englert and Ron Marcelin and Brother Regis and Brother Steve Urban and Mary Hart and, and Mary Michaels. So many of our people that we were celebrating just five years ago at the Smile 50th. And today to be here to celebrate with all of you coming in from various states around the country to be able to partake in the celebration of Brother Leo's life and legacy. We're thrilled. So let's head into the cave. I've definitely kept up the uh, organized chaos that the late Dr. Pat Murphy once spoke of with Brother Leo. So I know for many of you, this room holds powerful, powerful memories. And it means the world to have literally photos from the late 50s and on up throughout the cave. Brother Leo's peer groups started in the 70s after Smile in the mid 60s. Still go on here at Beloy. Being in the room, I hope today for you all, even this virtual look at the room, I hope it brings back some wonderful memories, emotions, fond glimpse back over the many decades with Brother Leo's legacy still alive and well here at Stanner High. After Leo's passing in 1995, um, Ray Stefan took over and kept all the programs, Smile, Peer Group, the lifeblood of our guidance program, alive and running. And so many alumni and former Leo friends and protégés, uh, Richard Lolly and Tom Dwyer, Marcos Rampoletto, all chipped in with the founders to keep everything not just alive, but growing. And we're so proud to be able to have this celebration today in honor of Leo's life and legacy. Room 303 for many of you is the Student Activities Office, SAC, and uh, Brother Ron Marslin, Brother Regis, Mary Michaels, Mary Hart, Sheila Murphy used this room for many, many years to hold many, many smile groups. Today, it's our admissions department, but the memory still lives on. So the SMILE program in spanning two centuries, the 20th and the 21st, in the early part of the 21st century, we wound up needing a classroom because we were unable to fit a lot of kids in the cave. So from 304, we started bringing kids for something called SMILE Weekly to room 206. Many of you who were in school in the 80s would probably remember the Big Brother program. Smile Weekly is very similar. Kids come together, anything they want to discuss. It's Smile's public face now, where any kid from the entire school can come join us. And speaking of that Big Brother program, this is probably one of the biggest changes that you'll notice. This room, Brother Ron's old office classroom, used to have a lot of couches and a lot of posters and great discussions happened here. I'll never forget Ron would have some of our friends from Dominican Commercial High School and it was a girls Catholic school at the time so we were able to have them here and had co-ed discussions. Brother Leo was a big fan of this, getting us the opportunity to have some discussions with girls too. Always ahead of his time, Brother Leo, no doubt. And now in 2020, it's a dance studio. Continuing to have kids have an outlet. So in its own way, keeping up the tradition. We want to thank everyone for hopping on Zoom today. We know that Zoom fatigue can be real. And we were so hoping to do this in person. 
But we hope we've captured a lot of the essence and spirit of what Leo did and continues to do in the 21st century. We also hope that you were able to get some pizza today because a celebration of Leo wouldn't be quite the same without some delicious pizza. Thank you so much for coming and celebrating the life of Brother Leo Richard, the legend and his legacy. So I hope, I hope you all like that. Uh, Joe and I did that pretty much just one take. Um, timing it in between the kids in the hallways was kind of funny, but Joe made a great point. It's, it's great for all of you to see things actually happening at Malloy, especially in these times. And so many people, uh, Ashley Callie is on here, and uh, so many of our guidance counselors have continued to do um, smile groups. Um, Mr. McGinnis has kept them going, and, and we're, we're so proud. And, to see all of you here from not just the US. Um, I, I know Claudia was joining us from Canada, so I would have said from at least two countries, uh, we have people here today. Um, and the Morris family, I, I, you know, all in, all in New England where Leo uh, grew up. Um, it just, it's just such an amazing thing to have so many people spanning so many decade, decades um, you know, here, joining us, here joining us today. So hope you all like that and, and thank you so much. I'm gonna uh, pass it over to Craig now. Chris, a quick, uh, a quick interruption, and yeah, thank, you so, thank you for so much for that video, and uh, even though I didn't deserve the shout out, thank you for that as well, but <laughs> you, you, made, you made mention, Talia used to wear this blue Adidas uh, sweatshirt all the time. Yes. Well, in my, in my room, I have a little prayer space I spend every night at, and this is at the center of it. Oh, no way. Oh, so uh, he's always oh, remembered. Gosh. That's awesome, Dano. Oh my! That's why the little walk I took before to get it. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Thanks, brother Dan, and thanks, Chris. Uh, and Chris, thank you for once again wearing a mask that looks like it should be in this TV movie, Tron, or something like that. It's really been enjoyable for all of us. I'm sure brother James Norton is giving you one singer after the next behind you about it. So. Um, I'd be remiss before we do the breakouts to the group. Uh, I saw that Mr. Jim Kinnears uh, joined us as well. And as you know, that the ripple effect that Leo did, one of the big things was when he heard about a kid in need, he would go right down to the office and say, we got to help this kid. And uh, Mr. Kinnear, as you know, uh, took over the reins from Brother Terrence for the alumni organization, but was a big partner in crime with Brother Leo, helping as many kids as he could uh, with scholarship or needs assistance, which we try to uh, honor today. So it's great to see someone that uh, deserves a lot more credit uh, to be here as well, like Mr. Kinnear, who quietly did all of that. So it's wonderful. We're going to be doing a small breakout group now. Uh, we're going to have like a little peer, peer group yeah, session down memory lane. So with that, Nancy, I'd ask you to break us out into those groups. Okay, one moment and we'll be breaking out into groups with our leader. Great. And um, Mr. McGinnis, Ted McGinnis and Brother James are headed to their offices. So uh, they will be in their breakout rooms in just a moment. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, yeah. And there's going to be a very simple uh, prompt for everyone. It's uh, Brother Dan and I in talking about this, you know, like I said, you know, he really just wanted to come together, have a prayer, have pizza, celebrate Leo. So for this uh, little breakout room, we thought keeping it simple is great because with Leo, there won't be much need for a, a prompt. But basically, it'll be, uh, you know, sharing a memory of Brother Leo. Uh, now, some of you didn't get to meet him, unfortunately, but you all were in Smile or Peer Group or you were his family. So whatever memory um, of Peer Group or Brother Leo or Smile, anything you want to share about his the legacy and, and its impact um, for you, your life is what will be. Uh, our prompt uh, today, and um, the groups will be uh, split up. Uh, there are six of us um, that will be in the group, so we'll have about, I uh, think, around 12 or so in each group. Um, and this is very much like peer group, because peer groups are randomized, too. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Hey, Craig, how do I open up my group? Just open, will it automatically appear here? Yes, it will. In okay, about thank you. One, one minute. Okay. So for those of you at home, 
if anyone, we hope everyone had, <laughs> we, we hope a lot of you were able to get pizza. And as you know, <laughs> was, this was Leo's absolute favorite. And so we have <laughs> ices from this today. Um, Leo used to oh, go come here, Pat. Pat Murphy and, and they got to know the owners very, very well at uh, Alba's. It shows you how long Alba's has been around. It's still terrific. What can I do for you, Chris? You know, Mike, just, you know, you and I have had such great uh, talks on the phone and, and just um, maybe what Leo meant to your family, because, you know, for all of us in the Malloy and the Maris and the Stanner family, it's, it's, it's obviously meant so much with so many people being here today um, and his life's work continuing. And so many of us that have entered counseling and mental health teaching because of him, like, again, the trickle down that just keeps going. But um, from, from the family perspective, what, what would you say in terms of his his uh, influence and, and legacy for all of you and, and see and seeing this, you know, that his, his Malloy legacy has just kept living on and on. Well, if such a thing is possible, his legacy uh, within our family uh, is as strong as it's ever been. Uh, I'm the only uh, living sibling of Teddy uh, but, um, uh, I, I don't know, uh, maybe my son, Mike, or Teddy Morris or Sharon can say how many cousins there are. There are a lot. And now we're down to another generation. Wow. There are people, a lot of people, uh, and some of them are on online here who have never met, uh, who have never met Teddy, uh, who, are under his influence because I'm thinking now of uh, Teddy Morris's, um, my nephew Teddy's girls, uh, who all uh, are leading lives that, that I think their grand uncle Teddy would be very proud of from uh, everything that I hear. And that goes on uh, for all the other uh, grand nieces. I think there's a few great grand nieces or nephews. I don't know. I could be wrong. There's, there's a lot of them anyway. <laughs> but Teddy, uh, uh, you know, we talk about him all the time. We, we uh, think about him all the time. And, uh, you know, you, Ted had a partner in crime and my brother Dick. And uh, the two of them, um, as I, I said in our little group, someone said he grew up in New England. He didn't grow up. <laughs> he never grew up. He and Dick uh, were, were uh, um, I don't know, there, there was something about, um, they, they, part of them remained 12 years old. That's, that's all I can say. Last Saturday, I was, uh, there's a street in Lawrence, we grew up in Lawrence, Mass on Tower Hill. And there's a street called Hunter Street, where my mother and father bought a house in 1927. And I had some of the grandchildren, my grandchildren with me, and I've shown him the house. Now, Congress Street, is the steepest street anywhere, even San Francisco. It's unbelievable. One day, Teddy was about four years old and my brother Dick took him and he was on a sled and he shoved him out into the street and he started to the bottom um, at a really rapid rate and a heroic mailman <laughs> came out of a side driveway and slid like he was sliding to second base and knocked the sled over, saving uh, Teddy's life. Um, that episode was brought up at least 100 times in my presence, um, where, uh, where uh, Ted would uh, put it on Dick, and Dick uh, would, uh, uh, would deny to have a fight about it. And so here we are, uh, almost 100 years later, uh, about 95 years later, and last Saturday, we're still talking about Ted going down the street, hurtling down Congress Street at 60 miles an hour on the, on the brave, um, on the brave mailman, and, and oh, yeah. denying any culpability whatsoever. Oh, so, yeah, he's he's as much a part of everyone um, now as he has ever been. Mike, thank you so so much. Um, I don't know if you saw in the chat, but one of uh, one of the alumni who's who's gone on to do some great work, like many of uh, Peter LaRuffa, who's down in Kentucky, he just wrote, "Close your eyes and tell me you don't hear 
Leo talking. So you guys definitely have a very similar voice, which is magical to many of us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I practice all the time. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before. Um, yeah. That's, uh, thank you. He was the uh, best looking of the Morris brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, if I could add uh, one thing, just to share with everybody, a lot of the content that we share and things like that will be uh, uh, over, uh, eventually uh, moved over to our Smile 50th Museum, that digital museum that we have on the alumni webpage. Um, one of the things that we would ask is we love to archive, we love to get as much information as we can. Um, so if you have anything that you feel that would be wonderful to add to the museum, please you know, send it to the Alumni Center. All of our access information is there. Or if you can, you know, just contact myself or Joe Soma, our communications director, or obviously Chris Doherty. Um, probably Chris will track you down first. Um, uh, so it's just really great. Um, if I could wrap it up this way, um, you know, there's Mary Oliver wrote a very famous poem, and I think Leo kind of nailed it with the answering this question. What is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And I think what's amazing is look what we have today. Um, he that's the answer, uh, you know, with what he's done. And it's amazing, uh, you know, and as we learned in our breakout group, Leo was the hurricane. Uh, and we, we still feel it today in the best way. Um, so with that, I, you know, what a beautiful day to celebrate it. I hope everybody could go out and take a walk, uh, you know, walk with a good friend or call up a good friend, you know, call up a family member, just, you know, do the walk, you know, um, with much love and much respect. We feel very honored as the Alumni Center to be hosting this. Uh, Chris, Thank you, um, Brother Dan, all of you. Thank you so much. And I wish you all a wonderful weekend and much happiness. And may you all have a happy Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks for everybody. Thank you so God much. Bless all. Frank McKnight, Thank a you. shout out to you. I saw you in there someplace. Thank you. Thanks, God bless all Statters. God bless all yeah. Statters. Leah would have Thank us go you. for a Thank swim. You, he used to say, it's good for the hot. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, everyone. It was wonderful. God bless, right. God bless everybody. Be healthy and safe. Guys up in Bye. Love you guys in Seabrook. Miss you guys so Thank much. You. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ted. Hey, Case. Hey, Ed. Uh, miss you guys so much. For any, uh, for any of the Morris clan still on, I just want to let you guys know about, I don't know, you may have seen this at one of the past reunions about in, 19, in 2005, around 2004, I was really doing a, a walk to the World Trade Center that, that Leo used to do. Mm. And, uh, so we started in the fall of uh, 2004. We didn't get to do it this year, not because of the pandemic. We actually were given the green light from Malloy because it's the whole walk's outside. We have lunch in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. That would be outside, Williamsburg Bridge, et cetera. But it was, the, it was the worst, rainiest day. So <laughs> we're planning on doing it, but there were some that actually questioned whether or not Leo had done these walks. We were like, what? And Brother James Norton was one of the first to say, I went, meaning him, Jim Norton said, I went on this walk. What do people mean that, you know, he didn't mm -hmm. do the walk? So anyway, it, there wasn't many people, but there was a doubter and they were, they were quickly quelled, but we have kept up this walk uh, in his memory. And a, and a lot of the young alumni that are on here, uh, actually, Ashley Callagy, who's a counselor here now, she was part of the first group uh, that ever did it. And I, I have to give credit to a kid. It was a kid from 2004 named uh, Nick Gilronan. And one day he said to me, hey, Dockety, what's those walks uh, Brother Leo used to do? This kid never met Leo. This kid started Malloy in the year 2000. And he said, what about those walks you told us Leo used to do? So, by the way, Nick at 15 sounded like a 40-year-old New York cab driver, so that's why I'm doing the accent. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we didn't get to do it his year. We started doing these dinners uh, in the city. We would take the subway, walk over a bridge, go to dinner, and Pat Murphy would join us. 
Mm -hmm. I had Brother James and I, and it was really wonderful. And the year after, we started doing these Leo walks, and they are a hit. Last year, we had 75 Malloy seniors and seven chaperones walked from Malloy to the World Trade Center. Uh, it's 11 miles. And again, Leo used to do it. I think Leo might have actually walked back. Do any of Mike Morris or any of the Morrises, do you know if he used to walk, or maybe Brother James knows, did he used to walk back sometimes? We took, I never walked back with him. I, I He would have had to carry me back. <laughs> but 